Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Uh, this week we're going to be taking a look at uh, Arkanoid on NES. Um, I'm sure many of you guys have played this before, whether it's on NES or in the arcade or various other platforms and uh, things like that, but we're not really going to look at the game as much as we are going to be looking at this guy here. This is the uh, Taito released uh, NES Arkanoid controller. Um, a buddy of mine recently was up in Georgia um, and a friend's storage unit going through some stuff and he found this in a box. He didn't know if it worked. Then he knew that I had been looking for one for a while. Uh, for those of you older subs that, that are here, you know I'm a huge NES collector. Um, and one of the things that I never really had was the controller for Arkanoid. So you can play it with a pad, but it's really kind of crappy because you're not getting that exact response. So we don't know if this one works yet, but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take a deeper look at the controller, kind of see how it currently sits. We are going to go ahead through everything, open it up, make sure it's good. Uh, as you guys can probably see here, the wire sticking out a little bit. But we're going to go through all this stuff, tighten it up, and then we're going to plug it in and actually test it to make sure that all of our repairs and restoration actually help. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the actual controller. All right, so here is the Arkanoid controller here. As you can see, it's got one button here, um, and it's got like a knob here that actually moves the paddle in the game. Um, we're going to start off in the back. There is four um, Phillips head screws. So we're going to go ahead and pull those out real quick to see if we can figure out what's going on with it. Not super exciting to watch me pull these screws out, but it's part of the process. Ideally, you should have like a little cup or something to put these screws in, but I did not prepare properly and did not bring one, so... Alright, so there's that. What I'm actually going to do is go ahead and uh, flip this guy over and we'll use this as the screw tray. I'm going to slide that over here for now. So here's inside the board. So you can see here our, our little dial here is essentially just kind of on a pot, potentiometer, like arcade stuff. This all looks pretty good and the cool thing is this wire here that's sticking out, it actually looks like someone in the past had probably opened this up and just didn't tuck the wires back, like there's no breaks or anything. So we're simply just going to take this wire here and kind of do wrap it back around like that and actually tuck it that way. And now we've got a nice secure grip of our pad and that's not going to move. So I think I think somebody had opened this in the past and just didn't put it back the right way. So that looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and actually close this back up. Everything looks good. The solder looks fine. Doesn't look like there's any damage or anything on the board. Looks pretty good. So we'll close this back up and then we're going to go through the process of cleaning it because I'm sure as you saw here we've got some uh, stickers and stuff like that we're going to pull out but we can do that once it's actually on the case. So same thing we did before, we're just going to put this back, make sure everything fits, yep, and then we're just going to put our screws back in, same way we pulled them out, tighten these guys back up. Got rid of our first problem, anyways, of the wire kind of hanging out of the front. We don't want to deal with that. Okay, so I'm take the next one here. And it looks like this says R Nintendo, or I can't tell. It's a weird little red orange sticker. It just says R Nintendo on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. R Nintendo. So, that's pretty much it. Now you can see that the wire that was kind of hanging out of the front um, isn't there, and this is actually super solid now. So we're going to go through the next step, which is actually cleaning this case up, because, again, we're going to pull these stickers off and kind of clean some junk up here. But to do that, I'm going to go get some uh, Goo Gone and a Magic Eraser, if I have any, and then we'll start kind of going through this. Got a little brush to clean out the uh, Taito area there. Kind of see some of the smudges there in the reflection. And then we'll, uh, once that's done, we'll clean up the wire and plug it in and make sure everything works. All right, so I didn't have any goo gone, so what we're going to do is we're going to use some uh, simple green here. Works just as fine. That, and it's actually not as oily, so that's good. So got my magic eraser. I'm just going to rip a little piece off here. And then we'll start by, uh, we'll go ahead and pick this sticker off here. I don't know if it's glue. It looks like an old, like, 
post-it note or something. Uh, yeah, we're not going to get so lucky. It's going to going to be a little difficult here. I'm going to go ahead and pick this off real quick. Alright, so that sticker is now off. So what I'm going to start by doing is in the back here, I'm just going to take the simple green, square it a little bit into the uh, magic eraser. Not a lot, just a little bit to get it on there. And then we're going to see if this cleans it up at all. We do have some adhesive on there, so I do kind of wish I had the uh, goo gun because it would kind of chew through it. But even though it really doesn't look that dirty, it's pretty dirty. I got my paper towel here once things get a little too wet. And it's cleaned up pretty good. We still have some of this adhesive stuff there, though. Should be able to get it with our nails. At least some of it. Yep, it's coming off. We have this little crack here in the in the scene that may be a little difficult, but luckily this isn't too dirty. I've seen some NES controllers that were not even really gray anymore. They're like brown or just gross this is more of a just let's just get it clean because it was in a storage unit for who knows how long but you can see how nicely that cleans up There we go, it looks actually pretty clean. Cleaned up nice. Button's working, knob feels great. Case is actually clean and not disgusting now and everything, so it actually looks pretty good. So there is one last thing we're gonna do um, to clean this up, and that's actually the cable here. I really don't think it's gonna show in video, but this cable's kinda like, almost crunchy, I guess is the right word. So what I'm gonna do, um, I don't know if it'll work with paper towel. We can try it. Let's see. Normally what I do to clean these up is just put a little bit of simple green here in the middle. And then just take the, the cable here and kind of squeeze it on there and kind of run up and down to get the junk off. And again, this is it's not like dirt. It just feels like it's been sitting somewhere. It feels like it's been sitting in a storage unit where it's kind of just like dry and like... Yeah, it feels much better. Once you clean it off, it gets more of its like original rubbery feel back. So I always just take the controllers, run some simple green or goo gone or something up them. And then basically that, I'm just untangling this cord here. Um, once that's done, you get that crunchy feeling off of it. There we go. I'm gonna take this here, kind of just go up the controller like this one or two times. Clean it off. Years of nicotine and dirt and who else? Who knows what else is on there? But let's give that a quick couple up and downs. And that feels much much better. So, all right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head over to the AVS and we're gonna plug in Arkanoid and we're gonna check and see how this bad boy performs. But there it is, much nicer and cleaner than it was. Let's head over. Alright, so we are back with the AVS. Um, again, not sure if any of you guys know what this is, but this is basically an FPGA, um, HDMI enabled NES and Famicom. Um, put a little custom sticker on here my friend made for me. But again, we're going to go ahead and take Arkanoid now, and we're going to pop it in here. And then basically what we do is we have our uh, regular controller plugged into one, and we're going to take our freshly restored Arkanoid paddle. We're going to put that in player two. And then we're going to go ahead and fire this up and kind of see what it does. So let's check it out. All right, we are at start cart. So we're going to hit start cart. It's going to bring up Arkanoid. Again, we have our uh, paddle over here. But we're going to go ahead and start player one here. And we're going to make sure that our paddle works. 
trying to keep it in the camera and move it out of the way here. So yeah, see? Everything's working. So you get power up and then you can go ahead and uh, fire the uh, It's actually kind of hard to play while looking at the uh, But it plays great. It's actually really responsive. I used to play a lot of uh It's too many. One more. Hey, there we go. All right, guys. So we see it's working pretty well. All right, guys, so there you have it. The uh, Arkanoid controller that uh, my buddy Lawrence picked up for me uh, actually fully working, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, it works really well. Again, this little this little pod doesn't feel as strong as like an arcade uh, control panel does. Uh, if you ever played a real Arkanoid arcade, it's got like a metal spinner and it, it really has some weight and like kind of throw to it. This is actually much lighter. But it's more than enough to play uh, Arkanoid on the NES. It, it feels great. So luckily everything was working. It cleaned up. So just a quick overview. We went ahead and we retucked the wire back here into the plastic. Kind of cleaned everything up so it's not dirty. And cleaned the, the cable off. So if you ever find any old NES controllers, Goodwill or yard sales or whatever, controllers, the cables are going to feel kind of crusty. Just go ahead and clean them off. And this cable feels brand new. So um, that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I'm trying to put more stuff out for you guys faster. We're dealing with arcade, console, pinball stuff. Uh, but as always, like, subscribe, comment. If you have any questions on the controller itself, where you can maybe find one, things like that, put it in the uh, comments below and we'll, we'll figure it out. So as always, thanks again for watching. We'll catch you next time. See you.